Hello, this is Michael Brown from the Ecology Action Center in Normal, Illinois, and this is the presentation on effective communication planning for sustainable resource management. Key to the success of any resource management program is a high rate of participation by your intended audience. Reaching that intended audience can take a significant amount of time and resources both of which may be in short supply given today's shrinking budgets. However, an effective communication and outreach program still can be crafted and implemented utilizing a mixture of traditional and social media in order to reach our intended audiences and increase participation rates in our resource management programs. The critical first steps to planning a communication program is identifying your target and your message. We need to know who is it that we're trying to talk to and what action do we wish them to take. Identifying and narrowing down, focusing these two items message an audience as much as possible before proceeding further into planning our communication and outreach effort will make for a much more cost-effective effort and time well spent. So two different strategies we're going to explore in looking at means by which to reach our audience um, are a shotgun approach versus a rifle approach. A shotgun approach is much broader than the rifle approach. In a shotgun approach, we're trying to reach our audience multiple times through multiple different means, but with the same message. This is usually best suited for a large and diverse audience, whereas in contrast, a rifle approach is much more precise. It's better to use this when we have a much more focused demographic we're trying to reach with a specific message. Another idea to keep in mind as we go about exploring our outreach strategies for communication is the rule of seven. And this is generally the idea that for any given individual within our target audience, we need to reach them not just one time, but multiple times, perhaps as many as seven times. This is based upon the idea that one point of contact with our message may not be sufficient to convert the individual to take action. So reaching the individual multiple times, perhaps through multiple media, with the same message. The message may start to, to sink in, eventually gain some significance uh, within their thought processes, and ultimately they may take the desired action. Another idea to keep in mind is the 20-60-20 rule. This is looking at the breakdown of the population within our given audience and the likelihood of a positive response to our communication message. So within this 100% of our population, there's likely to be 20% that is highly receptive to our message and likely to take action very easily, perhaps after hearing our message just a few times. On the opposite end, we have perhaps 20% of the population who is very resistant to our message. And regardless of the amount of times that they hear our message, regardless of the amount of outreach and communication they receive, they may be very hesitant to, to take the, the desired action. In the middle, we have about 60% of this, this target population that with enough outreach, with enough contact and communication, exposure to our, our message, that they may be willing to take action upon it. 
So what this does for us is looking at a breakdown of our, our target audience. Essentially, we can look at how we may need to spend our resources in our communication strategies. So the, the first 20% are not going to be cost significant. The final 20% may not be reachable regardless of the amount of resources we put in there. And that middle 60% is likely where we need to put the majority of our financial resources. So we can explore here a few different types of both traditional and non-traditional media, which may act as options, uh, tools within a, a communication toolbox. To begin with, within our traditional media, we have options such as traditional television, radio, and newspaper advertisements. These have their place in any communication program. Um, they usually have a dis demonstrated effectiveness, uh, reaching large numbers of people in a short amount of time. But on the downside, traditional media can be very costly in contrast to some of our other media options. So this is something we need to evaluate as we look at the, the budget for our communication outreach, look at our other communication options, and look and see where traditional media way play, may play into our, our overall strategy. Another way to look at traditional media is not just at paid advertisements, but also we can look at ways that we can get our story out into the traditional media using a press release. A press release is essentially a condensed version of a news story or a news item that we wish to bring attention to that we're going to put out there into the community, into the hands of, of the media and, and hopefully draw attention to, to this storyline. A press release is, is written to be, to be short, concise, uh, written in the third person, written like a news story, but we want to draw attention to the important parts of the story and at the same time make this interesting and dynamic enough that it will ideally draw the attention of our local media. Utilizing a press release, creating an event or an opportunity to, to focus on our story, we may be able to, to capture opportunities in traditional media while at the same time avoiding what may be the, the high cost of conventional advertising. In doing this, we may have opportunities for what's called a feature story, which may be a, a front page story or other high visibility story in our, our newspapers or, or magazines or a, a leading story on the local radio station news. But these can provide for significant opportunities for outreach while at the same time not carrying the same burden of, of expense that traditional advertising may. One of the other downsides, however, to this approach is unlike paid advertising, where we do have a high degree of control over the message that is being, being put out there with a feature story, while we can do our best to try and direct the story and, and get our message out there, ultimately the editorial control falls solely within the hands of the media. So this leads us actually to the issue of relationships. In order to increase the likelihood of good opportunities for feature stories in the local news media, it is critical to build strong relationships with representatives from your local news media. This can be done through utilizing press releases, but beyond that, getting to know individuals, finding opportunities to steer good stories to these individuals, um, making yourself valuable to them, and making yourself friendly. Maintaining this relationship over time, touching base when possible, even when news isn't available, but perhaps you might be able to hint at, at future 
news opportunities, something that's coming up. Um, it's very valuable to news professionals uh, to be able to receive early information on, on a pending story and to be one of the, the first in the loop to be able to release a story. So the more that, that you may be able to present these opportunities to the news professionals, that further builds the value of your relationship to them as well, and then may further increase possibilities for good feature stories benefiting you and your message and your organization. So social media is a whole other option to explore. Social media is relatively new and still developing in contrast to traditional media. Social media has only become prominent over the, the past five years or so as a, a viable marketing uh, tool. And of course, social media includes such websites as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and many more. And what it boils down to is, is that social media is a, a low-cost tool by which one can, can build your own audience in order to spread your own message using these online services where there are already people, people active, people socializing, people communicating. So by creating a, a user that represents your organization or, or your campaign, you may start to at, at very low cost and, and often free with, with many of these social media services, you may start to promote your message. In contrast, though, to traditional media, where we're paying for the existing audience in traditional media, here in social media, we do have to build it all ourselves. So, whereas in traditional media, we may get some immediate gratification and immediate results to a pre-existing uh, audience at a what may be significant price. In social media, instead, the investment is in our own time and effort. It can take a significant amount of time to, to build a social media following, uh, whether it be on Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook, or one of the, the many other social media sites. It takes a, a committed effort to promote your channel, to develop regular communications, to participate in not infrequent uh, communications and exchanges with your followers. Um, it's very much a participatory effort that can quickly become a significant sink um, in looking at usage of, of limited, limited time. However, given the time to properly develop social media audiences, the, the benefits can be significant. Um, the eventual access to what can be thousands of followers and, and through them thousands of other followers through viral exposure when perhaps friends of your followers see their activity, see their responses, their reactions to content that you've put out there regarding your message, then these friends of your followers will often see it as well, thereby doubling or otherwise significantly increasing the exposure to your original message at no further cost to you. Developing your own website for your, your message, for your campaign, for your outreach purposes is yet another electronic tool at your disposal. 
Uh, increasingly, building a website is not something that that need be restricted to professionals. There are multiple different types of, of tools uh, for content management systems such as Joomla or WordPress that allow for easy to maintain, easy to update websites. Uh, many of these content management systems are based upon a, a original design that was intended for the usage as a blog, but these have evolved over time to become uh, very content-rich, uh, complex websites while still allowing for that blog function. And what I mean by this is, is essentially that you have a, a news feed, you have a, a section of your website, whether it's, it's prominent on your, your front page or your landing page, or if it's located elsewhere and simply referred to on one of the, the sidebars. But a, a news feed allows you to, to promote news, events, ongoing happenings. Uh, essentially promote your message or your messages um, from your organization. But again, much like social media, this requires often building your own audience. And this is actually where social media and a website can work hand in hand. Utilizing tools such as RSS, one can put together services by which posts to the blog function or, or news feed from your website can automatically post to a variety of social media services. And so the readers, the followers of your organization or your campaign in your various social media channels can see updates that are posted to your website in, in real time or at least frequently as, as they become available. If, if one doesn't want to use RSS feeds, then there's simply the, the option of, of manually posting content from one's website through one's social media channels, thereby directing traffic, driving traffic back to one's website, and thereby demonstrating to one's followers the, the valuable content that may be find, found there, and increasingly driving more independent traffic to that website on its own as they look for related information. Another useful and usually cost-effective tool is email marketing. Through services such as Constant Contact, Vertical Response, MailChimp, and other similar products, one can send email newsletters or e-blasts to, to your mailing lists, whether it be 500 people or 5,000 people. Uh, these tools usually include a easy to format newsletter tool that does not require any knowledge of HTML programming or any advanced computer skills, simply the ability to, to drag and drop, to do some basic editing, um, often no more difficult than using a, a standard word processor. The ease of these tools allows for frequent uh, communications with your followers, but again, much like the usage of social media or even your own website as marketing and communication tools, it does require the building of your own following, building your audience. Due to federal legislation regarding uh, mass mailing through uh, email, uh, specifically spam laws and uh, laws intended to, to prevent and reduce spam emails, um, there's actually very strict requirements for doing performing mass mailings to, to mass mailing lists. 
And while many of us for, for years did get by with just performing our, our own mass mailings, using our own email list that we, we kept in, in Outlook or kept a spreadsheet, um, there's increasingly drawbacks to utilizing uh, methods such as that, uh, which may include the blacklisting of our host domains from which our emails may come from which may lead to, to problems with just daily communications in addition to the increased frequency of, of your email newsletters going not into inboxes but into spam boxes instead. If, if they are even not rejected from a recipient domain uh, from the beginning. So it is much safer, much more secure less risky to your own email domain to utilize email uh, marketing services such as Constant Contact, MailChimp, or Vertical Response, or other similar services. To utilize these takes the burden off your email servers. It takes the risk away of any blacklisting on, on your email server. Uh, these services do abide by federal spam laws as long as you follow their rules for how you are importing email addresses into their systems. <clears throat> In most cases, these services do require a double opt-in. That is that they need to know that individuals who are signing up for your email list have done so by choice and so they opt in once but then there's the double opt-in and that they receive a, a verification email message that they need to respond to in order for their email to be completely subscribed to your email list. These services can cost some money to subscribe to, but depending on the size and type of your organization, they still can be very cost effective. Um, I know that services such as uh, Vertical Response and some of the others do offer discounts to nonprofit organizations, which definitely can make these services much more cost effective. Traditional newsletters still have their place, and by traditional newsletters I mean those that are, are written and printed on paper and distributed through the U.S. Postal Service uh, via snail mail to people's homes. Um, this is still a, a valuable way to, to spread your message, uh, to keep in touch with your, your audience. Um, it does as well, in, in most cases, still require building your own audience. But there is also the option of buying mailing lists, um, which is easier nowadays than buying email lists, which are much more uh, tightly regulated by spam laws. <clears throat> On the downside of traditional postal newsletters is the significant mailing and printing costs that one may incur in contrast to the much more cost-effective email newsletter services. So what many institutions still might continue to do is, is a blend between these services, utilizing uh, email newsletter marketing um, increasingly, but still utilizing traditional um, mailing lists for newsletters um, where necessary, but also at the same time trying to segue and trans transition some of these, these followers into an email newsletter list from a conventional uh, traditional newsletter mailing. Classroom education is a valuable opportunity to reach youth and, and teach them about important messages, about sustainable resource management, about recycling and other practices, and, and hopefully uh, help begin to build these values in people at a young age. 
One of the, the side benefits as well is that children having learned about recycling or other sustainability issues in the classroom by an environmental educator will often then take these messages home <coughs> to their, their parents and therefore increase the impact of your original message by, by sharing it with others in their household. Some of the, the drawbacks or the, the costs to classroom education programs, it, it can take uh, some significant time and resources to develop a quality program that is welcomed in the classroom, that fits into the uh, curriculum of your school district and com accommodates uh, state learning standards. Uh, but once this is achieved and relationships are built with local teachers and school districts, uh, this can be seen as a valuable part of, of the student's education and can be welcomed by teachers and, and school districts and so can as well be a, a valuable outreach tool. In a similar fashion, community presentations, essentially education programs for adults, can be a valuable opportunity to reach members of your target audience. In these presentations, it need not be simply a, a lecture on your topic, but it can be an exchange, it can be a conversation. And so a little more two-way communication, uh, which is often much more valuable than the one-way communication afforded by traditional or even sometimes social media. These opportunities, though, may require some, some work, some planning, some effort, to coordinate with your local community organizations, to receive an opportunity to come speak to their group, uh, to be available at you know odd hours, whether it be an evening or weekend or early morning meeting. Um, there can be some logistical issues, but the benefits of the the person-to-person -person contact and building, you know, a a relationship with these groups and providing a, a face for your message and your organization can be invaluable. Likewise, events can be a great opportunity to spread a message uh, and creating a, a special event. Uh, again, one needs to look back at, at who is you know our target audience and what is the message we want to to give to them. What is the action that we want them to take? Keep these objectives in mind as you design your special event. It is much too easy to, to try and take on uh, too much too quickly in building a special event um, and often the, the return may not be there. Um, like other outreach means, you do need to build your following, you need to build your audience. Um, sometimes to build a big special event, it may take years of, of building upon the success of, of prior events and improving, tweaking uh, to make and create a, a unique special event for the community that helps draw awareness to your message. And, and as well provides opportunities for the public, again, for a little more two-way communication uh, with your organization. So all these strategies we've been discussing have been more of our, our broad approach or our shotgun approach. Turning now to our more focused, more targeted marketing and communication approaches or our rifle approach, we have a few different options. First of all, direct mailings. And in this case, we're talking about using US postal mail to households using often purchased address lists. This is something that there is some expense to, but it's usually not terribly expensive depending upon the, the size of the mailing list that you, you wish to buy. Um, in terms of regulations, it is usually much 
easier um, to perform a mass mailing in this traditional manner than looking at purchased email lists, which then you have to deal with uh, federal spam laws. So in buying a, a direct mailing mail list, you are usually able to purchase um, a very specific mailing list. Looking at the, the demographics of your community, you're able to look at uh, factors such as, as gender, uh, income, perhaps education level, and you can come up with a, a fairly targeted mailing list to hit only certain households within your community, which can make a direct mailing much more cost effective as opposed to mailing every single household in your whole community. Again, when we're looking at using targeted marketing and communication techniques, uh, we want to use these more where a more focused audience is key. When we're looking to reach the entire community, such as with perhaps a, a general recycle message, then, then using a, a targeted demographic um, might not be as effective a tool. But if we're looking at a, a much more specific message that we want to reach just certain households, then a, a direct mailing can be very effective and, and even cost effective. So in the same way, looking back at some of the social media sites that we talked about and our, our broad shotgun approach using social media uh, in order to get our, our message out, we can utilize many of these same sites or other web services such as Google and perform highly targeted uh, advertising to very specific audiences. We all know that that sites such as Facebook and Google are increasingly collecting a lot of demographic information about their users. So these companies know often our, our birthday, they know where we live, they know our gender, they will then on top of that know a lot about our interests. If we're searching for items on maps, or if we're tagging photos on Facebook of places we've been, then they know the types of places we like. If we're looking at search engines such as Google, then they know the sort of information that we're looking for and the topics that we're interested in. So from an advertising standpoint, this is incredibly valuable as we're able to purchase advertising that is highly targeted to very specific audiences, looking at age, gender, interests, education level, very specific geographic ranges, looking at, you know, the the entire United States down to a half mile radius of one specific address. So these targeted tools for advertising within websites such as Google or social media sites such as Facebook can be a extremely beneficial uh, means of getting a, a message out which can again refer uh, responders to this message back to our own websites or other source for more information and they have the the other benefit of immediate gratification that we are in real time able to see responses to our marketing campaigns even tailor our marketing campaigns to be more specific and better suited to what people are responding to in order to get our message out. So in just a short little time here we've covered a lot of ground on multiple options for communicating messages to audiences 
on sustainability topics. Um, we do have a, a variety of, of choices to choose from. Um, most of these options do require some investment of, of time or money, in some cases both. Um, in my own experience, I find that a, a combination of all of these strategies proves to be the most beneficial, um, and I do continue to, to tweak my own uh, strategies over time, uh, given new information and responses uh, from the community as we try to promote our own messages in sustainable resource programs here in Bloomington Normal. Thank you very much.